Hi everyone, loud and angry and nihilistic Tano here. The it, it, It's Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Godflesh record, World on Fire, Deadly, Kill Everyone. This is the sinisterly titled and latest full-length album from Birmingham Industrial Rock and Industrial Metal Outfit, Godflesh, starring, among others, experimental music workhorse Justin K. Broderick. These others being people like G.C. Green and a rotating cast of collaborators over the years, though right now in Godflesh's current form, it is just Justin and G.C. Now, Justin has the bragging rights of getting in on the ground floor of some pretty awesome genres throughout the 80s and the 90s, with bands like Napalm Death, Ice, Curse of the Golden Vampire, Yesu, who I've had the pleasure of seeing once, as well as Techno Animal. But in the late 80s, along with bands like Pitch Shifter and Ministry and Lard, and maybe to a lesser extent Nine Inch Nails, if you let me throw a popular name in there, Godflesh would go on to set the foundation for industrial style metal music, going on to influence groups such as Fear Factory or strapping young lad. And when I say industrial metal, I mean metal music that might potentially have electronic drums hanging in the background, really heavy, thick, distorted, bone-crushing riffs. So Godflesh, they formed in the 80s, they broke up in the 2000s, and no record in their discography is more celebrated than their full-length debut album, Street Cleaner. And it's not hard to figure out why, even on first listen, because of just how massive this record sounds even today, especially the remastered version. Even at 25 years old, this album sounds like an apocalyptic, aggressive beatdown that will not let up. The band would go on to experiment with more fluid riffs and melody and harmony and an overall smoother sound on the album Selfless. There actually were some riffs and grooves on this record that would go on to influence the new metal movement in the 2000s. And that vibe is even stronger on the band's next record in 96, Songs of Love and Hate. Not only does this LP forego a lot of the boomy electronic drums that we remember from past records, but there's more live drumming in the mix instead. And with tracks like Hunter, to me, this song is just totally, totally 2000s era new metal, but without the pop accessibility. On records like Us and Them, Godflesh indulged in not only incorporating hip hop rhythms into their songs, but drum and bass too. And what was at one time the band's swan song, Hymns is a fantastic record where they started bringing some atmospheric sludge metal sounds into the fold. They actually featured a kind of spacey and harmonious closing track that sort of led way to the whole Yesu project that Justin dove into directly after the demise of Godflesh. This record is easily one of the best goodbyes in underground extreme rock music, so do give it a listen if you get a chance. But now Godflesh is back after 13 years. New record. Which I guess is a nice change of pace given that all of the recent stuff Yesu has been putting out I've been pretty underwhelmed by. And the band is not really taking off from where they left in the early 2000s on this record. This thing is more like a hit of the reset button. This thing is like a record that could come out right after Street Cleaner. There's a track on here, Imperator, I believe it's called, that features some clean vocals, though this track is a little bit of a bore. The vocals are sort of buried, thrown into the background. The last song's a little long-winded, kind of slow and atmospheric. There's one beat on here that feels like it might have a little bit of a hip-hop influence, but for the most part, these songs are completely devoid of all the experimentation Godflesh did from like 1990 to 2001. Which is funny given that these guys are one of the groups early on that experimented putting industrial music and hip hop together and now that noise infused hip hop music is kind of catching on, it's sort of like nowhere to be seen here. I guess you should listen to this album if you want to hear Godflesh go back and just redo the sound, the concept, and the idea of their earliest material. Essentially what the wider community, music community, celebrates them for. Street Cleaner. This MO could not be more apparent right even from the start of this record, where the guitars are massively thick, compressed, 
heavy. Justin's typically deep, guttural, uh, barked vocals are very crisp, they're very clear, they're up front, they're in your face. I think the only thing this song really misses from the whole Godflesh aesthetic are the drums. They're so quiet, they're so buried. Where are the snares that sound like a shotgun going off in an airplane hangar? Occasionally they come up on tracks like Life Giver, Life Taker, but I was just hoping for them to be a little bit more prevalent. Still, there are some really good grooves coming out of these sort of stiff and electronic drums a lot of the time, like the rolling double bass kicks on the song Dead End, or the drum groove and the guitar riff on the track Shut Me Down, which is maybe one of the most nasty, head-banging, irresistible riffs on the whole record. Godflesh, guitar-wise at least, and, and riff-wise too, are sounding just as as ever. There are quite a few tracks on this record that could really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Street Cleaner in terms of dissonance and aggression and just bleakness and nihilism. However, there are quite a few songs on this record too that sound kind of inconspicuous for Godflesh. Like with the opening track or Life Giver, Life Taker again. These songs to me, while loud, are not really punishing enough, which really is what Street Cleaner is as an experience. A punishment. And with so many songs on this record just sounding really heavy and slow as hell for the duration of the track time, it kind of keeps these songs from feeling dynamic. Justin definitely makes the effort on this record, but sometimes the choruses, the hooks, the bridges of these songs don't really contrast one another enough to warrant any excitement or emotional peaks. The last third of this record though, in my opinion, really seems to pull things together, delivers one head-bashing riff after another, and the closing track, like I mentioned earlier, is a multifaceted, longer song with some interesting soundscapes in there, really sort of bringing that atmospheric sludge metal thing into the fold. This record is just another example of a group who put out some of their best stuff in the late 80s, the 90s, sort of coming back out of the blue and just putting out new material again. And that's totally cool, that's totally fine. I mean, you know, Aphex is doing it, My Bloody Valentine's doing it, way more people that I haven't even mentioned right now are doing it. And some of these artists thus far when dropping new material have stuck pretty passionately to what we remember them for. Some of them have ventured out and experimented. In this case with Godflesh, um, they're just really kind of sticking at home base and doing what is comfortable for them, which is a little disappointing given that the band experimented throughout their career, and maybe it would have been interesting to hear a record that was kind of a culmination of the many things that the band tried throughout their career. I think it was easier to kind of make a record like this because in retrospect, the music community has deemed the band's early stuff cool, whereas their drum and bass and hip hop influence stuff that would go on to sort of set the tone for new metal throughout the 2000s, not quite as cool. So I like a lot of the tracks on this record. I don't think there's a horrible song here. And I think Godflesh came through with good production. There are some pretty nasty lyrics on this LP as well, at least from what I can make out from the lyrics. My only big glaring issue with this record is that I, I guess the whole idea and concept was a little obvious, but that's it. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Transition, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, music, 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 forever.